I woke up on on Wednesday morning. Usually I set a couple alarms to wake up because I don't like to wake up. Hmm. But my first one went off and it said rebirth day. And I hopped <laughs> out of bed, downloaded it first thing yeah. so I could read it over breakfast. And I, I left before work an hour early just to go to the shop to get this because I didn't want to wait till five o'clock to read it. I wanted to read yeah. it before work. That's, yeah. that's how excited I was. I, yeah, and this is the most excited I've been for DC in a good long while. Oh, so. yeah, absolutely. Mm. I, I was up late on Tuesday night, and it got to the point where I might as well just stay up until <laughs> until they go online. You know, because yeah, you never do that, do you? He is a vampire. Um, yeah. He thrives on moonlight. Well, I, moonlight. when I record stuff with people like you on the, the West Coast, I kind of have to be a bit of a night owl. <laughs> Ah, see what you did there. Uh, see, see, see what I did. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> um, so you know we were all pumped, and for a lot of reasons, which I'm sure we'll we'll discuss, is that the very meta commentary comes out in this this book. Uh, so without any further ado, let's get into DC Universe Rebirth issue one. Uh, one shot. Jeff Johns, uh, mix of artists. We got Gary Frank, Ethan Van Sciver, and one other one. That, there you yeah. go. There you go. That's another regular, actually. He's, he's worked with all these guys before. Yeah. Yeah. So these are all guys that work really well with Jeff Johns. They're all, anytime he's had a major story to tell, he's gone to one of those three. Yeah. So that was a nice fitting, you know, and it's, way to start. And it's funny, actually, because obviously the, the first like page or so, it starts with the, the watch and we hear the narrator and we don't know who it is yet. Well, I mean, that's, we did but you know theoretically you wouldn't know who was narrating yet yeah um and that ties obviously into what we get to at the end but th there's mm -hmm. a lot of really nice um meta commentary here at the start uh mm -hmm. which i really like and, and people have talked about this already i've heard people talk about this online about how jeff johns is basically writing about the dc universe himself he's almost speaking in the first person as himself yeah. rather than this yeah. character um you know like i look down i'm, I'm direct directly quoting from the book here i look down at it and i know without question i love this world but there's something missing and i, I think mm -hmm. what, what works so well apart from who this character is which we're going to get to in about you know a minute is i think that's the way a lot of dc fans feel and have felt for the last few years four years yeah so i don't i don't think it's just john's saying i'm being this character i think he's saying this is the fans essentially yeah. this is that's everyone well he is a fan like that, yeah, that's course, you know he, he's it's fan not number one specific to just him this is encompassing yeah. every fan it's all their voices but at the same time the, the reason why i say specifically him is because i think a lot of this meta commentary and a lot of this book feels very personal it feels like a very personal written book a lot, a lot of this mm -hmm. Uh, narration is very much that so obviously before we start talking about plot details let's talk about Wally West because the ginger is back oh, yes <laughs> and, uh, and... That, this, was, this was part of the excitement of course because we if you've been reading Titans Hunt which is the lead in to uh, Titans there was a big hint at the yeah. end where they're all like wait a minute there was another one of us back, back in the day who was that that's weird yeah there's someone missing. And then lightning strikes. And then lightning strikes, yeah. Yes. And the other um, thing... And, and even, also... I was going to say, even before well, that, when they announced the the, the solicits for yeah. the first month mm -hmm. of books... That's what I was going to say. Yeah, like, the two books that had a warning were The Flash and Titans, and they both said, don't read this before reading Rebirth issue one. And it was like, well, what do those two books have in, possibly have in common? Yeah. So. There's only, yeah. Um, and it also should be noted that Jeff Johns really came to comics with Wally West. That was his first major series uh, that, that he made his name on. And Wally was, you know, his Flash. For as much as he worked with Barry, with Rebirth, with Flash Rebirth, and used him later throughout, you know, the, the comics, it was pretty much the Wally show. So... He's getting to revisit this character that he made his name with and gets to tell his reintroduction to this world that he's been missing from since um, the New 52. And that was the one thing that people would ask DDO and he would just clam up on. And he didn't want to address why Wally wasn't there. And it wasn't that there was a new Wally because it took three years into the New 52 for them to reintroduce Wally. 
Yeah, the the, the know, new so volley it's... almost felt like more of a reaction to the TV show than it did. Yeah, it was about that sort of time. It was when the TV show was in production. Yeah, yeah, when that came about, right? Yep. Yeah. So. So. It, it, yeah, it's Wally was one of the. It really was. Wally was very much the the poster child for everything we lost when the new Fifty Two yeah. started. It wasn't the only thing. Exactly. I mean, Superman lost the light, lost his parents, he lost his marriage, and I mean, we have kind of got some of that back now. But it, you know, like Wally was this representation. He was the big example of everything that went away. This idea of legacy, which they're now returning to and saying legacy is important. That's that's what it is too, because we lost that legacy. The whole stance of the new 52 was these guys have only been operating five years and with batman some stuff stayed so you saw all the robins in five years <laughs> and that didn't make sense and you know um it wasn't put up that that dick grayson was robin for that long and so there was gone there's this legacy the jsa was transported to a completely different earth you know and you know, and Wally represents that legacy. He was the first hero to take on the mantle of his mentor uh, at the end of Crisis on Infinite Earths. So he's very fitting to, again, to reintroduce the concept of legacy to the DCU. Yeah, and he's, he's also one of the more optimistic characters and one of the more mm -hmm. happy characters who makes a point of smiling, who makes a point of... You know, the, 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 I mean, Barry's all like this as well, uh, in the sense that right. they're, they're the superhero, the Flash is the superhero that will stop and ask you how your day is after he saves you. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Debatably, because he's got time because he can get anywhere else in super <laughs> speed. But, well, yeah, and that's... But he still makes the effort. And that's been, yeah. Exactly. And that's what makes him different than other heroes, right? Is like, he, he believes in this justice, but he also believes in... Why not do it with a smile? Yeah, do you know what almost does? Like, you can, because obviously Superman's a very smiley hero who cares about people, but mm -hmm. Flash is almost like the more down to earth version, which is kind of silly given how powerful he can be with his with his speed. But yeah. the, the the way he feels like the the everyman's hero in the street, you yeah. know, and a way that Superman just can't because he is this larger than life. You know, yeah. he's going to catch the play in the sky. You know, but Barrett, but like Flash's going to stop someone stealing your purse. Yep. <laughs> yes. Or that right there, yeah. but yeah, and and it's always made sense to gravitate towards that um, with the flashes, these very street level. While you can still do the time travel and and all that stuff, the cosmic treadmill, it's still his his villains have always been very street level. With Captain Cold, you know, he's just a thug that uses a cold gun to commit crimes. All you of them, know, really. Yeah. So, hmm. so and and it fits to bring. To bring this back around with him but the first thing we get after you know uh is that it said that the watch that he's talking about was given to him by his uncle yeah and that's barry the first who got, signifier yeah. of who this is that's talking yeah, yeah that no, it, absolutely yeah uh i'm, I'm kind of leaving the watch thing almost because it ties more into the ending like thematically yeah. but uh, yeah uh absolutely um so the first place that Wally goes is he sort of, I mean, this book is mainly him like bouncing around the DCU and yep. addressing different things. And he, he goes to Bruce Wayne, he goes to the Batcave yep. to see Batman. And I think we have to, we almost have to pause talking about the main plot of Rebirth to address what Batman's doing in this scene. Because it's, because yes. when there was four big spoilers last week, one of them, and there was one that scratched, well, you can, debatably the big one at the end is the one that scratched the most heads but this is the one that everyone went wait what <laughs> the, the one at the end was like you can understand it this kind of feels like this is the one that could easily go wrong if it's not treated well yeah. like, it, it could feel yeah. more gimmicky than the others and of course we're talking about the idea that there's, there's three jokers you know it's not just one yep. and i will say two things about this that are fairly positive right mm -hmm. i think so far at least in this book it's been handled okay because it's still been treated like a mystery. Mm -hmm. I like that. And two, in hindsight, it actually works better. Because see when Batman and Justice League sat in the chair and he's, what's the Joker's yep. real, name, real name? And he, he reacts like, oh my God, right? I actually kind of yep. love, in hindsight, that he said, what's the Joker's real name? And the chair just went, yep. which one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I'm like, that's actually kind of amazing. Like, Because that keeps the mystery. We still don't know. I did have right. a little bit of a problem with this, though. I mean... Oh, on you go. So is is this great detective, and it implies that the Joker's a 
concurrent. They're not they're not like one after the other because he says, Oh, we just caught the Joker yesterday, but now he's doing something else and they've got the other one in custody. And it's like so it don't, until he knew this for them to both commit a crime at the same time. Um I I just thought it meant that you know, the Joker is one of these characters that's timeless because you see the three different yeah, ones but, that they but pull he's, from. I mean, he says, oh, the Joker's just done something, but we're, we're transferring the Joker to Arkham as we speak. And it's like, mm, yeah. so it, it's it's just very, I don't know, it feels a bit easy that it took well, until he knew to see this. But it also, in, in the beginning pages, also, also hinted that the stuff in the Dark Side War upset reality. That's how Wally's able to try to make contact. Yeah. So maybe something with the Dark Side War, Dark Side of the Anti Monitor's presence. Yeah, I I would almost maybe so close. I'd speculate that maybe the same sort of like rift or whatever that happened during Dark yeah. Side War that Slet and Wally have a chance maybe to they come back. Through. That this yeah. is what maybe like the like the second Joker as it were, uh like remembered who he was. Like he got he got like, the the insanity peaked through and that's why this Ooh. but like I say this, this is like it's like two speech bubbles in this comic. Like, yeah. really, yeah. this is something they're going to have to explore in depth. That's the same. Mostly, I'm all right with it. I'm just concerned that, again, if they go without without explaining this problem here, it could bother me. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I think this is this is the one that's got the potential to be worrisome. But so far, I like that they're still treating like a mystery. Who we don't really know who any of these guys are. And that's good because we were all yeah. worried that he was going to give a backstory to the Joker, and yeah. I'm glad he did. Yeah. 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 So I mean, that, that that's you know, so far so good. Um, some concern, but so far so good. So yeah. So Wally shows up. Um, he sort of like, appears out of the Speed Force. Amusingly, oh. not unlike a, a certain moment in a certain film recently. However, much better. It did that. very much remind me of that, but yeah. done properly. Yeah. I wonder how much advanced time that John's had to go. Hey, watch me do this better. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Possibly, and that's actually that's actually the big reveal because you have that big one page splash where he just yeah. uh, like that's when he finally says, "My name is Wally West." Yeah, uh, the fast. When his kid life. Flash costume, so he's younger than he was yeah. than the last time we saw him. Matt, your mic's starting to uh, again. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So he's, he goes to see Bruce and. He tries to like reconnect. He's like, You won't remember me, my name is Wally West. And this is where we start to get some of the plot to sort of creep in. Yeah. He starts he's like, Someone stole uh Time. Time from us and so on. And uh one thing you might not notice here, you might not have noticed in your first read. Mm-hmm. Uh you actually see something fly out of the speed force and hit the wall with a little yeah. tink. Um and that comes up later. Because the first time I read this I didn't notice this. Mm-hmm. And I thought and I thought the moment later on came out of fucking nowhere. I'm like Yeah. Well, and and because the focus on this one's on the letter from Flashpoint. Yeah. um, From from Flashpoint Batman to Bruce. So, and it also looks like that gets pulled back into the Speed Force. Right? Um, No, no, well, yeah, that kind of does. So, is that John's retconning himself going, this was, you know... No, I don't think it's retconning himself. I I think, I have no idea that a lot of timey wimey stuff's going on and people are remembering okay. and it, it kind of explains like the whole new 52 thing where you know how can there be four robins in five years right. someone stole 10 years and their memories are all fucked with to make this right. work mm-hmm. um and that's kind of part of the point is, is that it's made them weaker and the like, aspect is on to say later on and that's right um and you know i, I, I like this scene because it, it i like that it goes to batman because he's like like batman figures things out like if there's, if there's someone that i'm going to tell give give like plant a seed and like like put doubt in his head and batman will get to the bottom he'll of it. follow it he knows that right. he'll he will not yeah. let it go yeah so give, give him a hint and you know so i, I like i like that that point for my, and this is part of john's just getting the dcu and it's it's something that i love here about wally because it's it's not even worried about himself. He's not concerned with getting back. He's mm-hmm. more concerned yeah. with making sure someone has the knowledge to fight yeah. than, than he yeah. is about getting himself back at this point, which I really right. love. No, I, I, I agree. And then uh, the next sort of chunk of this first, because it's split into four chapters, uh, the next chunk yeah. of this first chapter is mainly a, a look back at like the history of Wally West and sort of explaining yeah. his backstory. 
Um, I don't have tons to say uh, about this. It's mostly just a nice summary. I of... imagine it's useful for anyone who doesn't really know much about Wally. Yeah, if this right. is because your... I imagine there's maybe a lot of people who do. This may be the first comic they read, just because mm-hmm. it's very heavily it's... marketed that way. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, so it's it's. It's a lot of exposition, but it's a nice trip down memory lane. Um, I think it works to make sure you care about Wally, even if you didn't before as well. well and it yeah. preserves his Silver Age origin too, to where it's just the same thing that happened to the Flash <laughs> yeah. happens to Wally. But the way that Johns plays with it is like, oh, Barry subconsciously called down the lightning, so he wouldn't do this alone, which I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I like this. Obviously, it'd be stupid to bring him back and not have all the history, but I mm-hmm. like that it directly reflects on it like he met he immediately says i met the love of my life her name was linda park and he talks about how she was always his lightning rod and he mentions that he was the flash and you know like it he makes it very it's like a statement to us like this all happened this is all important and none of it's i mean it's kind of gone but he's going to fight to get it back which for me is actually one of the most intriguing parts about rebirth yeah it's about the characters themselves fighting to get their history back yeah which is kind of genius because in a very meta way it puts them right in the side of us because we want it back. It's yeah. It worked really well in Titans Hunt because that's essentially what was happening there hmm. where they were fighting to figure remember. out what they lost. Yeah. Right. And, but, and also they couldn't remember or else they give the villain... Uh, yeah, that was, uh, a, that was a really interesting duality in that book. Yeah. So, and so, so the villains Dan Diddy was what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Dan Diddy, yeah, they're the same. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 makes, that sounds about right. Really, and I, I know we shit on Didio, and that's what everyone did in at WonderCon is they let's did. poke fun at Dan. And corporate speaking, that's fine. They made money, and he didn't try to make crap with New Fifty Two. Yeah. Like he legitimately tried to do things. So I think I got a lot of respect for him after hearing his interview with Kevin Smith on yeah. uh, Batman and Batman. He he spoke very candidly there, and. He he never seems like he just seems like he made a mistake. He didn't yep. intentionally fuck anything up. He wasn't trying yep. to ruin anything for anyone. Yeah, I, I I think I think it comes down to he didn't quite completely understand. Yeah, he doesn't have the same level of understanding that Johns does. Yeah, because well, he's an editor. He's not a yeah. he's not a creative in that way. Like he has he's written comics, but he comes at it from a different angle than yeah. someone like Johns. So yeah, and it really feels like the. The who's in charge of what's actually happening in terms of story has been passed on to someone else, and it's kind of for the better. We can already feel the effect. There's just more. Hope. I mean, uh, you know, we, we were talking about legacy. I think. Mm-hmm. Do you think this this will be John's legacy going forward? Yes. Yeah. yeah. They call it rebirth, and that was his thing. He brings back, you know, he brought back the Teen Titans, right? Is the the team from the '80s, the new Teen Titans mixed with Young Justice, and then you know he makes, out. huh? Brought he, back brings, Hal, yeah. he brought back Hal and the Green Lantern Corps. Yeah. He brings back Barry Allen. You know, when something happens at DC, it's a crisis. And this isn't a crisis. This is a rebirth. So that's his legacy going forward is Johns is the guy that fixes things. Whether you like his retcons or not, whether you think he's a terrible exposition writer, he is great at resetting the story. So, and that's what is needed right now. Yeah, no one re- retcons like Jeff Johns. Nope. <laughs> um, all right, so chapter two. All right, so chapter one was called Lost. Chapter two. Yep. Um, it's kind of a, a weird hodgepodge of a chapter. It kind of jumps around a lot of different yeah. people. Um, yeah. Now, the first couple are a bit more meaty than the rest of them, but we start off with an old man yes. in a, an old folks' home uh, being chased by the orderlies. He's orderless. really old, too. Yeah, he's ancient. He, yeah. he looks spry he's... for his age. He's proper running. Well, <laughs> then you find out about him, but it says he's born in 1917. He was part of a secret group of... Uh, what do they call mystery men? Yeah, which is. I, th- I think my favorite line here is, uh, "He's connected to lightning too." Yeah, yeah, which made me think Jay Garrick, right? Yeah, and then the bait and switch happens. Yeah, and it's uh, Johnny Thunder yeah. from the Justice Society of America. Yeah, and what one of the things, uh, one of the moments I really like in this scene is when Flash like, appears, uh, when Wally appears to him, yeah. and he shouts out, "Find the Justice Society." Uh, mm-hmm. it, the next panel is Johnny Thunder, like with tears in his eyes, saying, "It's all I've been trying to do," and yeah. everyone thinks he's crazy. And it's like, "Oh man!" Like it's yeah. emotional, isn't it? Uh, this yeah. is where they really start hitting me in the feels when they start getting to this stuff. Well, it says that he's been in that old folks home for thirty-seven years, and 
you know, it's like, what is, has he been trying this all that whole time? And people are just looking at him like he's nuts, you know? And they talk about he has a connection with his great grandson. And, you know, again, it's all about the legacy. Is are we going to see a new Johnny Thunder? And he also called uh, uh, Wally the genie, which yeah. for those that don't know, that's Johnny Thunder's thing is he can call upon this genie. Yeah. It's, it's very Shazam-esque because they're from the same era. But, um... And then it moves to Metropolis. Yeah, we go to a uh, police station in Metropolis, and the uh, what's her face? Captain Maggie Sawyer. Sawyer, yeah, that's what I was looking for. Uh, it goes to Sawyer, and she's talking to with an old detective about uh, a woman they've picked up mm-hmm. um, for stealing a sandwich of all things. Because we're there's from Foods Free. Yeah, and like, what country is that? Yeah, <laughs> and. The woman they're interviewing, who we never get like a clear look at her. We we only get like no. you know a close up of her mouth and things like that. And we know she's blonde. We know she's we blonde. The back of her head. Yeah, and she uh, she's saying that, and that they actually they bring up Superman specifically, and yep. they reference. Now obviously we're going to talk about Superman fifty two yes. uh, later, but they mention you know Superman's missing. Uh, they might even be dead, and she's okay. And she 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 says it's it's fine. Like every, okay. everything will be okay, and. And they why ask, does she know that? Yeah, it says because I've seen the future. Um, oh dear, calm down, Matt. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm with him on this. Yeah. And then we see the one bit of evidence she had on her, um, and it's a Legion ring. Do you know, do you know, why, this, ring. Do you know why this excites me so much? Why is that? The Legion is is the ultimate legacy. Yes, they they survived a thousand years, and their their legacy still lives on, and that 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 sums up this comic. It, it, Perfectly, really. Hmm. Well, because they 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 base themselves off of young Superboy Clark Kent, and if he can make a difference, then why can't we? And that's that's why I love the Legion so much. Is they are the continuation of Superman, and it's across the galaxy. Like they're not all from Earth; they're from all different planets. But they come back to Earth to protect the universe, and they are a Legion. They're not a league. They're not a team. It's but yeah. it, it's worth I think, I think it's worth pointing now like this, this second chapter the first one we went to yeah. was um who was it we went to I forget now it was Joy of Thunder it was went Joy of Thunder and then it's went to uh, a Legion character and those are yes. both things like the JSA and the Legion of Superheroes mm-hmm. are both things that like we had versions of them in the New 52 but, but they, they weren't, weren't good. yeah they weren't good they weren't what people wanted <laughs> I mean some people like the Earth 2 to be fair but it's, it's no. okay, but it's a different telling. Yeah. I, I like you know? Earth 2, but it's not the Justice Society. No. It's, it's not GSA, no. Um, no. But, like, no one liked the Legion of Superheroes in New 52. No, no one. It was terrible. I read issue one. It was atrocious. Yeah. Well, um, it was Legion lost again, and that's not the traditional Legion. Like, we're talking... And these are also both teams that John's worked heavily with in his time at DC, with his whole massive run on JSA and then in Action Comics... He brings back the classic Legion, so um, his his uh his story of Superman and the Legion is is in my top three Superman stories. It's just yeah. fantastic. And this is why we're friends, Connor. Yeah. Um, and then Fuck after, you, Pete. And then after, <laughs> and then after that scene, we jump to uh, Troy and Ray Palmer, and that, right. that's not only like we've not had much happen. Steve, man. Sorry? I'm not even sure. I said, what a racist Dean. I'm not even sure he's from Hong Kong. Oh, yeah. She's, cause, yeah, she's from 30 30 <laughs> Portland, <laughs> yeah. Uh, back to Hong Kong. Yeah, that was really weird. Um, but, so, and what I like about this, that's actually, I guess, a character who's not really had much justice done to them in New 52, but it yeah. also ties a little bit back into the main plot and this yeah. idea that someone stole something. Because um, Ray tells Choi, like, I've left you an atom belt um, I need you to shrink down and like, it'll home to me, come and find me. But mm-hmm. the scene ends with a really weird cliffhanger because he, he, he says he discovered the microverse and something's been changing stuff. And But he says, this is extremely important. This is the last thing he says. When you reach the first world of the microverse, you're going to meet someone. They're going to seek you out. Whatever you do, whatever they say, do not. And then it turn- that's when the, the screen turns off. And I'm like, okay, what? first of all, John's you teasing motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> secondly, but this feels like it ties into the main plot of... Uh, I'm really intrigued as to where this is going to pick up, because there's not an atom book, is there? I would I would assume this might end up showing up in either the JLA or a GSA book at some point. 
Mm, that's green. not a bad shout. I feel like that's it'd be one of those two if they don't announce an album because some part. Yeah, because yeah, so, I mean, in the new Fifty Two, Atom most of his stuff was with Frankenstein, right? Yeah, and Shade. Hey, there's a shade. Yeah. And then we had. He really was Adam. He was just Doctor Palmer. Yeah. And just we had name. Lady Atom, who ended up being Trigger. Atomica. Mm, yeah. yeah. Uh, I saw how video games work, John's. That's one of my favorite <laughs> comments from the internet. <laughs> Um, so and then we jump to Blue Beal, another character who hasn't exactly had a, a nice time. fared well either, yeah. New 52. And again, we have this idea of legacy. We have Cord, we have Jamie, um, and the idea he's the young reluctant hero and Cord's going to help him. And I, I mean, a lot of this this section of the book does feel like it's setting up lots of other things for yeah. other books, but it also all, feel, it all feels like it's backing up the idea that we're back to legacy, we're back to caring about yeah. these characters continuing. Um, and I'll, I'll and that was Blue Beetle too, and in that show, it was all about legacy from Dan Garrett to Ted Cord to Jaime Reyes. Yeah. So, and of know. course, uh, Doctor Fate shows up as well. Yeah. <laughs> shows out of nowhere, like the that's, RKO that's what Doctor Fate is, though, isn't it? He always just that's, shows up out of nowhere. Well, it's like I got exactly. This guys. Well, I didn't realize he's got this. a much better look than yeah. the other ones. So. I didn't realize this when I read this the first time. I read it twice now, but the um. <laughs> The actual Blue Beetle book that's coming, uh, Doctor Fate is one of the main characters. Yeah. He's uh, oh, really a. Really yeah, it's uh, Doctor cool. Fate and Cord trying to like figure out the the mystical properties. That's the big thing here is they they confirm yeah. that the Beetles actually or the Scarabs the actually. Scarab, which yeah, up to this point has been alien technology from the Reach, is now mystical, but we don't know from who. Yeah. Hmm. Or what? So it's, that's it's very cool. interesting that Fate looks very much to be Kent Nelson. Mm. Okay. Now, how would you know that? Well, we've got the current book, and okay. we have a Doctor Fate, but his costume isn't like that. He's been wearing like a, a hoodie and jeans, basically, <laughs> with the helmet. Yeah, uh, and right. and um, at the end of the last issue, thirteen, uh, mm -hmm. I believe it was, uh, Kent Nelson showed up, and he's okay. like a fam he's a family friend of his parents. Gotcha. And he's introducing him. Like it looked like they were building towards him mentoring him a little bit. Give him, give him but, the helmet and the boo. But, yeah, but here you get the, the close-up of the eyes, and it doesn't look like the new guy at all. And it doesn't, it doesn't just, it just doesn't sound like him. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna give you that one, because the look like, how do you know what he even looks like in that mask? But, you know what I mean? Just based off of the eyes. Yeah, just like the, the body shape, all of it just doesn't, like, in Well, he looks way... like classic Dr. Fate. Like, this yeah. is Fate from the JSA. From yeah. Whenever that. Yep. Um, also, I love the look on uh, Ted Cord's face when he says magic. Yes. It's like a little giddy child, isn't it? It's like, oh, yeah, it's magic. What gets lost about Ted Cord is he is this fun, loving character, and um, he's a tinkerer, even down to his adventures with, with whatever team he's been on, whether it's the Justice League or just Booster. So, And it's good to see him separated from Booster, because for the last 15 years, it's just been those two, the blue and the gold. Hmm. So it's good to see him team up with another gold character in <laughs> Fate. wonder if that was intentional. Well, maybe. You never know. Uh, but yeah. Then next we get a quick, there's a, like a sort of quick page of like different like uh, characters getting a little bit, see a little yeah. bit of Damien, a little bit of Jessica Cruz, and just this idea of legacy, and they all kind of set things up. Uh, like, if you I'm know. wrong, they've aged Damien up a little bit, right? Yeah. Because he was 10 before, yeah? Yeah. 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 So. Well, he was ten when he showed up, but I mean, I'd it's like, been a couple of years. Yeah, I'd like to think that he's aged a little bit since he first showed yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, but and he's officially a teen because he's going to be in Teen Titans. Exactly, that makes sense. They're like, okay, he's going to be in Teen Titans. It, he has it to be does in. almost <laughs> feel like that was there just to shut up the people, the, the inevitable yeah. section of the internet that would have complained that he's not a teen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Anywhere Damien shows up and starts trying to be the boss, I'm fine. Also, I, I, I vastly prefer the idea that he's uh, 13 and 10 anyway. Have you ever seen a 10-year-old in public and thought, yeah, I can take him. Yeah, that's how I feel. Damien needs to be at least 13. <laughs> no, Pete, I've never thought that. <laughs> yeah, no. 10-year-olds are terrifying. They, they, they have, like, no filter and they will do anything. Not in a straight fight. Like, yeah, I could, I'm a grown man. I could take a ten year old. Why are you? Why are you thinking this? <laughs> because he thinks he's Batman. Well, no, no, <laughs> no. Because I'm thinking like you, know, you, you think of uh, D Damien fighting criminals and the and the books and stuff, and it's like you see I a. Think if he pulls out a fucking sword, I'm gonna shit myself. 
<laughs> okay, if the ten year old pulls out a katana, I might back off. All right. <laughs> Not that I'm planning a... not, he might. <laughs> not, that, not that I'm saying oh, I'm planning an attack on a ten year old. I'm just saying you read a book with about a ten year old beating up a criminal. And then you, you say you're not planning on attacking a ten year old. And then you see a ten year old in real life and you go, Yeah, this is a bit silly. Like so thirteen's a bit better, is what I'm saying. Anyways. And uh, Jessica Cruz sets up, you know, Green Lanterns because Hal's like team up with Baz, like that's what she's talking about. And yeah, the guy with the gun. Yeah, the guy yeah. with the gun, yeah. Uh, and actually I really liked her who's Sinestro. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. neatly sets up Hal Jordan the Green Lanterns as well, because Sinestro's a big part of that. But it's just yeah. a funny thing that she doesn't know who Sinestro is, because... Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's just barely Green Lantern. She's powering up until the Dark Side War. So... Oh, yeah. She just, I mean, we'll talk about yeah. her becoming Green Lantern uh, later, when we talk about Justice League. Um, But, yeah, so... Uh, but the last thing, the thing that closes off this chapter... <laughs> Um, which again ties into the end of Justice League, which we, I know it's a bit weird. We're talking about this first, but this is the big one this week. So yeah, we're talking about this first. Um, so we see Pandora, Pandora, the mystery character who uh, was popping up a lot at the start of the New Fifty Two. Yeah, in every uh, number one issue of the New Fifty Two, she's somewhere in the background. Yeah, and I remember Rudy being... lives. <laughs> Why did she have her own series? I don't know. I never read money. it. That's that's Good the answer, answer for the New Fifty Two because money. Because I, I I mean there was excitement when the New Fifty Two started and when we noticed her in the first issue of every single one it was yeah. like it was like oh what's this leading to and it led to well not much um, it was a bit of a bit of a dud um, but the important thing is is she's talking to someone and I'm going to read out a bit of her dialogue here I think this is because right. mm. again we're setting up who is this person who has stole ten years who is this person that's affecting the universe right. Um, and particularly the second panel, she's like, skepticism, doubt, corruption, all things your cold heart believes in. But in the end, there was hope. And the heroes of the universe embody it. Their hope, their devotion, their love for one another will vanquish what you've done. It may be over for me, but they will prove you wrong. They will prove that you're nothing but a lonely, cruel monster. Well, she doesn't finish the word monster. She gets exploded into... And I've done with eviscerated. Eviscerated, yeah. Also another word, yeah. <laughs> Um, and she's I've just, seen that somewhere just, before. Hmm. Mm, yeah, it is very. Again, it's another meta thing where if if Wally is yeah. the fans, she yeah. is the new Fifty Two. She personifies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's almost. I almost feel like they've kind of redeemed her a little bit just by her saying, "Look, they've got hope, and they've got, and they're going to yep. defeat you." Like she's almost cool. saying they're going to fight back and they're going to win. You know. Yeah. Right. Well, she is the Pandora that opened the box. So, like, yeah. if anyone's going to root for mankind. You know, it's gonna be, well her. be her. Yeah, yeah. So that's the yeah. end of, that's the end of chapter two, and that's uh, legacy. Uh, legacy. Sorry. Very appropriately titled. Yeah. Yes. Very appropriately. Uh, and then the next title is still kind of jumping around different people in the uh, the DCU, but obviously it's less about legacy. Although you could argue this is kind of about legacy. So we found out in Justice League that uh, Wonder Woman. I was gonna say Superwoman there. What the hell am I thinking? Uh, Wonder Woman. Uh, apparently has a twin brother yeah um and i think that's what her present day series in a uh, ruckus yeah, books that's the first arc is called lies yeah lies. it's yeah. going to be about that and of course it's worth noting that uh baby dark side is still a thing okay. so i read this before i read justice, justice league, league. Ah, right too. yeah you were confused as shit how the hell is dark side a baby I'm not i was like i was like what the hell happened in justice league when i got to this bit yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which also, which we'll get to, but like Grail covered in all this blood. I'm just like, man, John's is so great at creating creepy villains, like especially in Flash. Mm. And he's done another one here with Grail. So, yeah. Um, so, so that, this is basically, this chapter's still about things that we've lost for the most part. So we, we go to the site of Superman 52, which again, we'll talk about later, but everyone's around. We see Martian Manhunter, we see Supergirl, we see a bunch of different characters. Uh, but the, the, the next page, it, it talks about, this is where the, the real theme of this chapter comes in, and it's about love. And it's about what they lost, other than time. It was relationships and things like that. And he, he does it with one that we completely lost when we met to New 52. He does it with Green Arrow and Black Canary, uh, Ollie and Dinner. And they have this moment where they see each other and they've never really met but mm-hmm. like as Wally says in the narration like they feel a spark that they can't explain 
And it, 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 there's this nice thing in the page where it shows you the rest of their like day almost uh, mm-hmm. side by side, and with both of them at the end like just sitting in their beds lonely, not knowing why They're they feel they lost. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, why... a, it's a powerful page. It's the layout as well. The way they're literally parallel. Yeah. yeah. Um. And again, it's one of those main things that people feel was lost, and you know, I mean, we lost a lot of relationships. In fact, almost all of the relationships went. You know, we lost all of them pretty much. Mm, yeah, and everything but maybe the bat fat, like the closest members of the bat fat, yeah. like bat and right. like Bruce well, and Dicks. I, I was thinking yeah. specifically romance wise. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, we, we lost all of them. Uh, don't don't you crack a joke? Don't you try? <laughs> you try crack a joke? <laughs> it was right for the picking, but. Yeah. And by but the no, way, not- by the way, guys, uh, not a DC thing, but I just want to say, Captain America doesn't already has a boyfriend. It's called America, right? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, someone please draw that. <laughs> Boy, if you're listening, please, I commission. <laughs> Is that how it works? I commission you, and then they have to do it. Well, that, that, reminds me, that reminds me of the office when Michael thinks that to declare bankruptcy, you just have yeah. to go out of the do. office and shout, I declare bankruptcy. <laughs> but yeah, no, with, with the relationships, back to rebirth. Yeah. Um, that's what makes the Superman, uh, the Lois and Clark story so, so great and fulfilling is you have Superman with Lois yeah. and their family. And they have the history. So, that's the yeah. thing. And is it's it... all there. So... Also, I love, I don't know what it is. I, I almost hope that Superman keeps, I know he's not, but I'd, I almost like him to keep the beard. I, th- I think for some reason, ever since Pax uh, action run where he had the beard, I feel like, you know what? Superman kind of suits a beard. He's running <laughs> the beard, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, I feel like that was a test run for what was coming. Yeah. Um. So yeah, this next scene actually, because we're talking about Superman, uh, quite rightly. Uh, th- this is a very important one. So we've got we've got original Superman and Lois and the son John at that motel. Um, and we'll talk more about them later because we're going to talk about Lois and Clark issue mm-hmm. eight. Um, but. This was a very interesting scene because Clark goes to grab some lunch and a mysterious character shows up who nope. doesn't tell him who he is, but he says, you can call me Mr. Oz. Uh, we'll come back to who that might be at the end. Because uh, there's, a, there's a, a winning theory right now. Um, yep. But what he says to Clark is very interesting. Yeah, he says, to tell you something in the wake of this tragedy, you and your family are not what you believe you are and neither was the fallen Superman. That is extremely interesting. And but the fact is, is it kind of makes more sense because this whole book is telling us that this isn't a different universe from pre-Flashpoint. It's that time was stolen and things were altered. And that makes me go, well, wait a minute, how can we have an original Superman who's got a wife and a kid if technically New Uh, 52 Superman is just him de-aged? And that, but the interesting part for me really is that it's not just that he's not what he thinks he is, it's what New 52 Superman isn't what he thought it was either. Right. So, so my my guess would be that this Clark is real Clark, and he always has been. Right. But when the New 52 alterations happened, when the, the hand was waved, like, there right. was a splinter, and, like, the New 52 Superman was either, uh, to borrow something from the Flash, a time remnant, uh, uh-huh. or, like, some weird copy, or I don't know. But there's something you want, you want to find out. Own. Yeah. Do you, do you think we'll hear this in action comics or Superman? Um, well, it could be either, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, because it's it's the same Superman. Just uh, Jurgens is dealing with the Metropolis stuff, and I think Tomasi is dealing with the stuff with John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah with like, the family uh, stuff. The Superman's yeah. family. Lana's going to be in that, and that's New Fifty Two. Lana, which is really cool. I like that preview that we've seen uh, earlier this week. I love that she's going to be a mainstay. Lana was actually one of the best parts of the New Fifty Two stuff. I think. Yeah. Yes. From like, Pac, she was consistently great. Well, that was because of Pack. Yeah. yeah. It was because of Pack. Yeah. He's he's the biggest casualty in all this. Is that he's not on a book yet? Yeah. I, I, I was upset when he wasn't announced as one of the the rebirth books, yeah. but. Um, so now this is very interesting. I am really excited to see how this all turns out, and uh, the, well, the 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 one true Superman is rightfully. If if you're having someone orchestrate to remove all hope and make things dark, you take out true Superman. Yeah. And you replace him with an imposter. 
So you know who this is. This is Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder's behind all this. Is that, oh, is that who the hand is on the front? <laughs> Zack Snyder's oh the one. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, dear. But no, uh, really, really cool. Uh, we'll talk more about Superman later, obviously. Uh, so then, then we jump over to Aquaman and uh, Mira. And Aquaman proposes. And uh, so it's a nice scene. It's a nice mm-hmm. scene uh, building up what Aquaman's going. But I think the really important part of this is that, that it's this moment of... Uh, love returning that gives mm-hmm. Wally enough strength to find Linda because he couldn't find her before. It confused me a little bit. I thought they were already married in when, when I read the Johns run. Ten, I thought ten they were years ma- have been stolen though. Yeah, but in in the Johns run in New 52, I thought they were married there. They th- did. They married, they had kids, they had uh, Jai, Jay, ow, god damn it, Kira. Um, Yeah. They, uh, Jay and the other girl, I can't remember her name, um, and that's where they left off. But yeah, but if 10 years have been stolen from everybody, then that whole relationship's gone. Wait, but that was in the New 52. No, not in the New 52. Wally wasn't around in the New 52. No, 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 no. We're talking about Aquaman and Mira. Oh, yeah. no, I gotcha. I thought we were talking about, uh... Yeah, I was lost for a minute there. <laughs> yeah, so was I. This yeah. is my cat bit. I, I sidetracked. I, I don't remember them being uh, married in the New 52, and I read most of it. Like, I read all of John no, it was... They called each other husband and wife, but it was more like a ceremonial thing. Right, okay. So, maybe that, he says that's must be where I've got it from. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, maybe, uh, maybe they're already married as far as Atlantean law is concerned, but he's proposing yeah. like a human because he's wanting to get married. Yes, uh, right. I'll accept that as a very good uh-huh. answer. Um, but anyway, so that, this is him to Finland, and this might be the most heartbreaking scene that we're about to get to. Uh, <laughs> so, we see Linda. And have we seen Linda in New 52? Has she popped up in Flash or anything? Nope. Uh, I can't, I'll, I'll I'll remember. Just been Barry and Iris and, and that stuff yeah uh so she's trying to get into the the scene of where superman's went missing or possibly died uh and i, I like that the effect of that's still being felt throughout a lot of this like it's, it's a big thing that's just happened yeah, even if it wasn't the right superman and our superman yeah yeah still had an impact yeah so it still did something so so all his narration here it all talks about how uh like he's missing her and how it's been torture and like so on and he appears to her like he did to Batman earlier. And then he smiles and says, I'm back. And then there's a, a lot of tension here. And then she eventually says, I don't know you. And it's still that, a lot That of was like in uh, Temple of Doom where Mullah Ram plunges his hand into the chest and shows you your still beating heart. That's what this scene did to me. Yeah, that's heart. I was I was on the bus in public and I started welling up when I when I was reading this bit here. Uh, I was like, must must hold it in, <laughs> must hold it in. Oh, uh, uh, that, that's I. Do, do, do you know what the one thing this does for me though is that the moment when she eventually remembers him. At it's some point, be that much better. yeah. I'm actually. I mean, I guess Titans is mainly going to be Wally like centric because he might be like I'll be having Dick with my leaders probably. Um, mm. But I do like it. Just made me think. Why isn't there a Wally West book coming out of this? Because yeah. I feel like you have a story here to tell about him trying to get back to Linda. I think we might get one soon, mm. but they obviously they didn't want to announce anything because if you announce that, yeah, yeah that's true. You, you ruin this. So I think we'll get and, one in a few months. Well, do, you, do you think they're going to yeah. be like, oh, by the way, that Scott Lobdell Red Hood book? Oh, secretly all along, it was actually a Wally West book by whoever we want <laughs> jeff parker there you go uh, i think if you reach into the internet right now i'll punch you you don't even put that out there <laughs> you don't even do that <laughs> uh, obviously i think they're going to start seeding it in flash because yeah. we got that and i i think well, it, it's twice monthly williamson really only talked about the one arc yeah, yeah so true. there's going to be a lot of st- they're going to get through that first arc in three months yeah so i'm, ho- I'm hoping three, three months not even three months well, because if it's two a month and is it six, is it six? Okay, yeah. Well, we don't know well, how long it is, but typically, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm hoping that Wally's a a pretty major character in the Flash as well, and not just Titans. Yeah. I'm ho- I'm hoping he's really yeah. felt. I feel like he might be just because you know the solicits. Yeah, had to be big. Yeah, yeah, and they and they were saying don't read it before Rebirth. Yeah, I mean he's obviously around yeah. in there. It's just how much. Yeah. So. That was uh, love that chapter, and then we move on to the fourth chapter, which there's a couple of quick glimpses of things like they tease like the the plot of Batman, like these two new mystery characters that are going to be invading Batman. Yeah. There's a little tease for Constantine with uh, 
Swamp thing. Swampy. But the it's real... a great insult there, though, from yeah. Constantine. You bloody turnip. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> but the main thing here is that the Wally's basically just giving up. Like, if, if Linda can't get him back, he doesn't really believe that anyone can. Um, and he, he's, you know, he sees Boomerang, he sees Cyborg, he sees Dick, who's got the blue suit. Uh, yeah, and, and and before all this, they were best friends, right? Yeah, like, that was mentioned. So like, he's not getting through to anybody, not his villains, not his co-workers, not his best friend. You know, yeah. but there's one last person he has to yeah. try. Uh, yeah, because the, the last thing in the page with uh, Dick on it is a uh, then I see him. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're not the last person yet, but uh, the other Wally West. Right. Um, and that this this is perhaps the only part of retconning in the entire thing that I think it's a little bit clunky because yeah. like they, they, they brought in this new Wally West, uh, the B Kid Flash, who is black because they want to match the T V show, but everyone still wants original Wally West back. But then they can't really take away the new Wally West because then it looks really bad because you've introduced yep. a black Wally West and then, you know. Um I just you know, before we get so there's a lot of people saying Oh yeah, you just want your you you want to be nostalgic, so you want your 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 white heroes back. But it's not that; it's just that this new Wally just wasn't that interesting. No. I, see, this, I've not even read anything this new Wally. It's nothing about the new Wally. That's not why we wanted old Wally West back. We wanted oh. old Wally, Wally West back because he has the history. Because we've read his past. Yeah, see. His, his wife, his kids. No. We care about him. We we care exactly. About him. He he could have been any race, and we and if it's the same character. We're gonna want him back. It's he could have looked exactly the same and just been right. a young Wally, and we still would have missed what we have yeah, lost. Yeah, exactly. That, that's because of a new kid Wally West that was white, and we mm -hmm. still would have wanted the old one back. Yep. So that's a ridiculous. I think that's a ridiculous statement. Um, yeah, well. <laughs> and uh, so he, he, you know, he, he sees him and he, he talks about when he explains the whole, you know, grand being named, both named after the same grandfather, their cousins. A uh, little convoluted, but it fixes the issue and we get to keep him around. Um, and who knows, he may be a really good part of Teen Titans, uh, which is where he's going to yeah. be popping up. Well, if he's not written by Venditti, he might actually be good. Never mm. know. And, and who's writing Teen Titans? Do you remember? Um, Teen Titans? No, I'm not it's sure. It's Benjamin Percy, I think. Oh. Um, okay. I've been enjoying his Green Arrow a lot, so... Yeah. And he writes, he writes Emiko really well. Yeah. Um, and he did that, sister. he did those two issues on Detective, right? Yeah, yeah. They were fantastic. Yeah, I read those ones. I was a, might have to track those down. But yeah, so, hey, more, I mean, if you can make it work, that's great. I was always like, I always felt Tomasi wrote the better uh, Damien than Morrison. So, yeah, definitely. you know. Well, then he, f then he gets to the, the main person here. So he, he goes to Barry Allen. And he talks about Barry Allen smiling. He talks about Barry Allen bringing all the kids pizza that he's just saved from a fire. Um... And he basically, he's not even trying to get back anymore. He, he just says, like, that's enough for me. I, if I can say something to him, I can die in peace. Like, he's, he's giving up. He's ready to die. Like, he's, he's almost giving up hope. Kind of like, almost, you could argue, the fans might have been towards the end of the new yeah. 52. It, it's time to, like, let the past go. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. It's, it's time to give it all up, yeah. And, you know, I think for a lot of us, um, you know, we got to the end of the new 52, the amount of books we were reading from DC had diminished drastically from the start of it. Um, yeah. And I, I think that's almost what this represents. So he shows up to Barry and he's basically just saying <laughs> goodbye and he thanks him for his life and everything he's done for and, him. And this is where the tears came. This that, is like, uh, yep. They're not, they're not being too. held back anymore. No, that, this is where tears mm -hmm. proper came. So Wally starts to fade into the Speed Force. Uh, and he starts to fade back, and Barry's like, I don't understand, you will one day. And basically, before he's dying, though, he's like, go to Batman, ask him about the letter. You know, he's trying mm -hmm. to plant those seeds again. He's trying to get Barry and Bruce, who are the more detective ones, to come together and try and figure this shit out, because he wants them to fix it. And he's literally, fa like, I'm looking at the panels now, and I'm almost getting misty eye just talking about it, because he's, yeah, mm -hmm. he's, he's fa fading into the speed force, and there's just that moment where Barry's eyes just open and he says Wally. And it's like yep. the first time anyone in the DC universe has acknowledged Wally West in six years. Well, the, and before that too, the, the one line that stuck out with me was Wally going, thank you for an amazing life. Yeah, that's the mm -hmm. one that gets me as well. 
and if and if that is John's using this to be the fans and himself, it's thanks for being there. Even if they don't have it now, you can't take away my memories. Mm. Yeah, you know, it's like you, you might not have been there for five years, but right, we had you for twenty, thirty, whatever it was. Exactly. You know, like Still, we, we... thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just the moment where Barry grabs his hand and pulls him out of the Speed Force, and you know he's back, and they hug, and they smile at each other, and you know when was the last time in a DC movie we've seen someone smile really? <laughs> it's been a That's while. It's not Joker. It's not Joker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, this is the this is the the, the scene also, of the comic, you know. I I take umbrage Umbr- too with when they hug. And it's and it looks like it's an aged up Wally from where he was, right? Because he's about the same height as Barry when they hug. And when he says, "How could I ever forget you?" and those a holes that added Hail Hydra to that image, while funny, takes takes away from this moment. And and you know, but I can't yeah, ruin it for me. Fin- I will not let. No. It. Yeah, it doesn't affect it. That's another we are complaining about. No, I'm just saying it's such a nice like I think it's Gary Frank who drew it. It, it should have been exempt from from your memeing. Uh, Thank you. Keep exactly. your memes away from our moment because that that scene. Exactly. It wouldn't surprise me if at the end of the year when we're looking back at the year since we first started and picking our favorite moments, it wouldn't surprise yep. me if this moment's still near the top, if not number one. Because mm-hmm. it's just yep. it's it is it's Wally finally coming back and Barry acknowledging it, and of course what follows is Wally explains the time lost and it's interesting to know because I remember when Flashpoint just happened and we weren't sure if Barry could remember everything it was very yep. unclear yeah Um, but it, it becomes more clear here that the, over time the memory just got muddled and everything went away yep. Um, kind of how it does with comics is you kind of forget these things that happen because it's about what's happening now but not happened then yeah you know and that, this is where sort of the main themes and the idea of building the plot outside the meta idea um yep. is he's like so, someone stole this from us someone stole 10 years someone's messing with it i don't know who they are but i know they're there uh it, it, they did this to weaken us to weaken everyone um and because you know, barry's even like was it was it thon like is it him that's doing this right and you know he's like no no, no it's something else it's someone else um More powerful uh, oh, yeah, I, I just got i just got i just got a flashback of the opening uh monologue from arrow as i said that right? yeah, yeah i know I, I, thought oh, I, was thinking I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I was like what did you just do uh, something else someone else but as, as he's narrating this this is when it it goes goes to the back back to the back cave mm-hmm. and batman sort of wandering to the back cave and he notices where the the thing hit the wall before when the speed yeah. force was there as wally's continually talking and talking about this guy, someone's even more powerful than Dark Side. It's a force out there that we've never met, um, and it's and he says up the themes. He's like, it's going to be a war between hope and despair, of love and apathy. And it's like, it's just it's bringing this all back. It's like we're all wanting this hopeful world to come back, where everything doesn't have to be gritty, where everything doesn't have to try and be dark. It's kind of like if you look at the movies, it's almost the same thing that's happened to DC movies after Dark Knight. Is Dark Knight was amazing. But they've misunderstood yep. why it was amazing, and they've tried to make everything dark and gritty since. Yep. The same thing. Which ki- kinda. Yeah. yeah, and the same things kind of happened in comic over a longer period of time, from a certain yep. era. Um, and this is where things get really meta. And then at the end of this page, we see Batman chipping away at the rock, and he says, oh. "Even now, Barry, you've turned the page, and Batman's holding the comedian's pen with the blood on it from Watchmen, and it says we're being watched." And it's, oh. and it's this yeah, kind of thing, just reading it again I know, and it's the kind of yep. thing where you hear a week in advance that Johns is bringing Watchmen into DCU and mm-hmm. that it's connected to stuff and you hear that on its own and you think oh this sounds like a stunt it sounds kind of ballsy mm-hmm. it's a brave brave move but then you hear, you hear the idea that oh Dr. Manhattan's the one who stole time Dr. Manhattan's going to be the, the villain yeah we get the, that in the next little epilogue yeah. there, don't we of the DC yep. universe, and it's kind of already been hinted because we've seen the people exploding, like uh, Rorschach did. Uh, it's identical, Rorsch- isn't it? Yeah, yep. amazing. And uh, so, so you, you get that, and but just the way this is revealed, the, the way they build up to this, that there's someone because they don't even know who it is. They don't know who the Watchmen are. No. They don't know who any of these characters are. He's just in someone's watching us, and as he says the word "watch," we see Batman holding the pin, 
and it's this perfect little touch. I just want to say like how wonderfully planted this was from the first page of this book. Where the clock, yeah. It, not even the clock, just the layout. It's the same yeah. stylistic yeah, yeah, layout yeah, yeah. as Watchmen. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, it's very good. I, I mean, we knew, I knew going in because I couldn't hold off on the spoilers, yeah, yeah. but I kind of almost wish I didn't because yeah. my mind would have been blown. I think. Yeah, uh, that's that's one hell of a reveal. Well, and it ends too in like a compliment to the open, which I didn't realize till now. Yeah, yeah, because it ends with the, the the clock from Watchmen mirroring the the watch yeah. from the start of the yeah. Because we get to the epilogue and we get we go through space and we end on Mars and we see the mm-hmm. watch being broken apart and fixed as dialogue from the original Watchmen book uh, is over it. So because some people mistook this as narration, but it's not. It's actually just a direct lift well, yeah. from yep uh, from the original book, and it ends with the yellow clock. Uh, counting down to midnight which was obviously a big thing in Watchmen as well so it and that, that's the end of the book and it's it, it kind of it just the whole thing uh, above being like an apology and a return of hope and like I say it it has this idea of the heroes are going to be fighting for hope um, mm-hmm. and fighting to get back to what they were and fighting to get their relationships back um, but even this idea of the clock counting down and that Manhattan's this really all powerful villain uh for me, really works. I think you can be cynical about them, including Watchmen, but I think the meta commentary and the way it's been used is actually yep. kind of the perfect way to use Watchmen. Yeah, it's the same thing Which... you just said about Dark Knight Rises. Uh, well, Dark Knight trilogy yeah. in general, where this is the the same thing where it's Watchmen that was it for comics. That that's the shift essentially. That's yeah. that's what's to aspire to be. Which I mean, obviously, Watchmen at the time, the, the point was it was a, it was a. It was a deconstruction of superheroes. Yeah, it was what what you shouldn't do, essentially. Yeah. In a way, yeah. Um, it's, it's what not to be in the long run. I bet you Alan Moore is pretty pissed off. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure he's screaming <laughs> out, out in the moors somewhere. He's just... Out, out there, there's there's a there's just a beard shouting in, in the hills. <laughs> he's more man than beard. Well, he's... More beard than man, rather. <laughs> yeah. fist, uh... fist in the air, just screaming <laughs> to the just, heavens. Just... out through the beard. Yeah, <laughs> he looks like Cousin It. Um, this is the first time Johns has repurposed stuff that Moore worked on, which most would take as a, yeah, that's right, you write comics, right? This becomes part of the bigger thing. Mm. And no one ever touched Watchmen because it's this thing that is untouchable and it's out on its own, you know? And I remember when Johns was doing the Green Lantern stuff based off of that, that the the Tiger story. And uh, Moore was not happy about it. You can't think of your own stuff, so you go back to thirty-year-old Pish. And he was not happy know. when they did that. Uh, you know, the before Watchmen stuff a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. Right. And he was very unhappy with them then. Yeah. Right. Well, I never read any of that because I, I that felt kind of weird, and unnecessary to me. Um, where I feel like how it's been used here because I, I don't necessarily think we're going to have like Rorsch- I mean, Rorschach. technically should be dead. Uh, if this is set after Watchmen, it should be. Um, he should. Yeah. I don't think we're going to get Rorschach. I don't think we're going to get necessarily Night Owl or Silk Spectre. I, I don't think we need them. Although I have heard some people are theorizing that the two new characters in Batman are Night Owl and Silk Spectre. We'll see how that plays yep. out. However, Mr. Oz could be Ozymandias. On this yeah. One. Yep. Um, that that would stand some reason because he would know about what Manhattan's doing. That was the first thing that sprung to mind when I read the name. But... Yeah, right. Because who, when you read Watchmen, who's the real hero of it? And it kind of comes out that Ozymandias, you know, you have to sacrifice a few to save the many. And you know, and if that's he's working to prevent Manhattan. Who is this cold individual that has no feeling? Because he's pure logic. It's just got no humanity left, essentially. Right. Yeah, exactly. humanity is important. Is the kind of the whole point we're going to get? At, I think. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so no. So needless to say, we all loved Rebirth. Uh, <laughs> I should mm-hmm. Um, filled me with nothing but optimism for the DC going forward. And yeah, I'm sure there'll be some bad books there. They can't all be great all the time. But oh no. Um, That's, and obviously, some aren't going to hit our personal tastes. They, they could yeah. be good, but just not for us. Right. But uh, very optimistic. I'd just like to say as well, even just it's still in the issue. When you turn, you get that splash page of of all of them 
of everyone. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Just, yes. Yeah, Wally's new costume down there on the corner. Yeah, yeah which is, he has the updated version of Kid Flashes. Just red yeah, and I mean, yellow. it's a, yeah, it's a red and black uh, yeah. costume. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, they can just kill, they can just make him the Flash because there's already a Flash, and oh. they can't make him Kid Flash. And he even says in the book, there's even a line that he specifically says, "Yeah, uh, my days of Kid Flash are behind me," or something to that effect. Yeah, yeah. he's 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 grown up from that, like the rest of the Titans have. Yeah, it, yeah. Would, it would be silly for him to go back to being that. So they can't have to give Which, him just, it's, his own. And it's a better costume than the one Johns gave him in Rebirth, which was just a darker version. Mm. You know? Yeah, so. that was silly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I really yeah, like this. I wasn't fine with this. Plus, it shows off his red hair, and we all know Connor needs a hero. I do. I haven't um, got anyone else. I mean, look at that splash page and find one other. You've got Mira. Yeah, but <laughs> see, this is the thing. Female gingers don't get the same shit that men do. <laughs> this is true. They just don't. This is true. Nope. And this is just, it's just, it's unfair. I'm sick of it, frankly. So, this, this is my hope.